Hey, I'm Dr. Cody. I'm a U.S. Navy trained psychiatrist, and I've spent the last 10 years testing what's called neurotechnology and brain optimization tools on myself and my clients. Six months ago, I got back from an overseas trip to Paris for work, and I noticed that my brain metrics had completely tanked. There's a brain health score called Peak Alpha on the Muse headband, and I found that that had dropped to below 9.4 hertz, which is well below average for my age, as you can see with this graph here. Not only that, but I could totally feel it. I was just with low energy, my focus was totally scattered, my mornings were foggy, I just couldn't think clearly, and my motivation in the afternoons was really non-existent. I was really struggling. Since then, I've rebuilt my morning routine, and today my brain baseline sits at 10.4 hertz, which is well above average for my age group. In this video, I'll show you the routine that I've been using to get here. This isn't just another morning routine video, I'll show you real brain data, how to layer in devices and practices into your routine so that you actually practice them every day. And we want to make sure that you're making real gains in your mental health and mental fitness. I'll show you the three specific brain tools that I'm using right now every day to strategically help me boost my focus, my energy levels, and encourage what's being called long-term mental fitness. This routine includes using the Muse headband first thing in the morning for mindfulness meditation and to track my brain health through peak alpha levels. I'm also using the Neurable headphones for deep work sessions to track my focus and make sure that I'm taking breaks. It actually tells me when my brain needs a break. I'm also building up a data set for brain health metrics that will be coming online for Neurable very soon. And once a day, I'm using either NeuroVisor or Vilite to promote mitochondrial health in my brain and also long-term neural health. And we'll talk more about that in this video. So if you're like me and you really care about building your mental fitness and your brain health the same way that you should also be training your physical health, you're in the right place. So let's dive in and start the night before because good mornings start with getting a good night of sleep. I really try to avoid stimulating TV shows or content online an hour before I go to bed to allow my brain to wind down. If I'm a little revved up, sometimes I'll try the Violite nerve stimulator to help my nervous system calm down so I can get a good night of sleep. I personally don't have much trouble sleeping most of the time. I get up early, I work really hard, and by the time it's time to go to bed between 9 and 9.30 for me, I'm exhausted and I fall asleep pretty quickly. I think one of the things that really helps me is I make sure to go to bed and wake up around the same 30 minute window every day. That really trains your body to release a lot of melatonin when you go to sleep that combines with a full day of rising adenosine levels to help you go to sleep at night. It's called sleep pressure and it combines with melatonin to get you to sleep quickly. If you have anxiety problems that are keeping you up, take a look at the Violite Vagal Nerve Stimulator or with the Muse headband, they have this digital sleeping pill mode that helps promote theta. So it has this audio that goes in and out depending on how much theta you have in your brain as you're going to sleep. And as you go to sleep, the music actually cues out. The device is actually tracking your brain waves and helping lull you asleep with the music. It's really cool. I don't usually wear the Muse headband at night unless I'm doing sleep studies just because I don't have much trouble falling asleep. Usually I'm up around 5 to 5.30 depending on the day. I try not to use an alarm. I'm often waking up at that time without an alarm about five minutes before it goes off. So my body is really well trained. And if you can get your body trained to a schedule like that, there's actually a cortisol spike about 15 to 30 minutes after you you wake up that way that really gives you a surge of energy and you can really use that as your body's natural performance hormone and ride that wave and get a lot done in the morning as a result. So right after I wake up, I go to the bathroom, splash a little cold water on my face, and then I'm going into my stretching routine. I like to stretch my hamstrings and my quads as well as my back because I do get a little tight overnight and I wanna stretch my body and loosen up for the day. Just two to three minutes just to loosen up, and then I go into my journaling exercises. Then I sit down for about five minutes of what I call reverse engineered journaling. So I'm imagining that it's two, three, five years from now, and I've accomplished things that I want to accomplish, and I'm feeling extremely grateful for them. So I'm writing in the journal, Cody is so happy that his wife is happy, his children are doing well, and I get really specific about that. His business is supporting them all. He's able to engage in neurotechnology every day and help people on a daily basis. So I'm feeling a ton of gratitude and I'm mentally training my brain to assume that these things are already true. And then when it sees a discrepancy during my day-to-day -day activities, it's trying to figure out how to merge my future self 
with what's happening in my current reality by taking advantage of opportunities that are coming up every day. So I do that journaling to get this mindset shift that anchors the rest of what I wanna do with my morning routine. So after five minutes of that, I'm putting on the Muse headband for a 10 minute mindfulness session. I use the real-time brainwave feedback to get into alpha state and make sure that I maintain that. And if I slip out of focus and there's negative feedback on the neural feedback, I'm redirecting my attention back to my breath and getting those birds in the audio that are indicating that I'm calm, focused, and relaxed. Once I'm done with the Muse mindfulness meditation session, I've got my peak alpha score for the morning, and then I'm moving into a different meditation routine because Muse rewards high levels of alpha and there's some other meditation techniques that get a lot of beta and gamma spike. I take the Muse headband off for that portion and I go through that energetic meditation routine. If you wanna learn more about that, I've got it in my Muse Meditation Mastery ebook. There's a lot of activating different what I call energy centers and breath work, and it's really invigorating. I'm also visualizing my future self during that energetic meditation and allowing my brain to really cement that vision for myself. So that total time of meditation and journaling takes about half an hour, and then I'm off to the daily activities. So by about 6.15, I'm at the gym doing my weightlifting, my strength training. I'm really only doing about 30 to 45 minutes of weightlifting these days, mostly for maintenance, but I think that you can get a lot done during that time if you're not standing around talking at the gym that you really get your sets done and you have high intensity and by 7 15 i'm back home with the family by then my wife and daughter are usually up for the day so i hang out with them for about an hour have some coffee talk about family activities that we're planning for the weekend and then at about 8 a.m i'm headed upstairs to get into my first deep work session. I have found from the Neurable headphones that my best focus sessions are in the morning. There are some people that work better in the evening, but I'm definitely a morning person and my Neurable metrics definitely reflect that. So that first work session is deep planning, script writing, or building out client programs. That's that real deep work that I treasure that I get a lot done between the hours of 8 a.m. and noon. And every day with that, I am using the Neurable headphones. I'm tracking my focus. And and for the most part, I am taking breaks when the headphones ask me to. The headphones are tracking my brain waves and noticing when my brain is fatigued and taking those strategic breaks helps me with my endurance through the whole day. And what's cool is they have some new graphics on the app that actually show you when you are getting distracted. It's been really interesting to track my focus metrics in the morning and I can't wait till they have these additional brain health metrics out. And on some days I am doing my long distance running. So if it's a weightlifting day, I tend to do that first thing in the morning, but in the winter I'll do my long distance in the late morning when it's the most warm outside here in the desert. So there is that one variable. And if I do go for a run, I'm usually doing cold plunge when I get back. So on a run day, late morning, I will go for a run right before lunch. On a weightlifting day, I'll just work up until lunch because I've already gotten my workout in. And that brings up a good point. I don't eat all morning because I want my brain Brain running off of mostly ketones in the morning in a fasted state so I can get my most work done. I'll take a break or two during that first morning block, but the first big break of the day is around 11.30 a.m. where I eat lunch. It's my first meal of the day. It's heavily ketogenic with just nuts and fruit and yogurt mostly to keep my blood sugar steady and brain energy sharp. And that is Greek yogurt with no sugar. Let me know if you want the recipe for Dr. Cody's lunch in the comments below. At lunch, I also take my daily brain health supplements. So I've got my supplements for long-term brain health and mid-term brain health, as well as short bursts if I need it for the afternoon with certain nootropics. I've been testing stacks like this for years now. So I've got my own lineup that I use daily. I actually have all these supplements under the Tech for Psych brand right now. So you can check that out too if you're interested. After my ketogenic lunch, I'll go back to work for the rest of the afternoon I usually have a couple more hours to work on the business. Uh, a couple of days a week, I am seeing patients and clients between 2 and 4 p.m. So that tends to be the end of my workday on those days. By about 4 or 5, my brain's pretty zapped. It's time to wind down for the evening. I'll go down and hang out with my family for an hour or so before dinner. And I'll eat my second meal around 6 or 6.30 with them. That typically will have more carbs so that I can wind down, my brain can get fed, it can run off of glucose, and I can get good sleep at night because I notice that if I go too heavily ketogenic that I don't sleep very well. During that time in the evening, I'm usually reading a business book or a brain health book just to feel a little productive. 
On certain weeks, I am running my five-day challenge program, which is at 5 p.m. Pacific. So that'll be a full work day, and then I'll run the group. But that only goes for one week a month right now. And that's kind of my hardest week of the month right now. The rest of the weeks, I'll take it a little bit easier to allow myself to recharge between five-day challenges. Often in the evening, I'm trying to read like a chapter or two of either a brain health book or a business book, just to feel like I'm learning something and doing something productive with my evening. Lately, I've been trying to incorporate the Neurovisor or or the Violite into my evening routine. Neurovisor is fun to do in the evening, but it does kind of occupy you for like 15 to 20 minutes because it's stimulating your visual centers. What's nice about Violite is you can get that light stimulation for the mitochondria of your brain by just wearing it while you're watching a TV show if you want. But I have been meditating with the Violite and it definitely chills you out, so I'm experimenting a lot with that right now as well. I'm making sure to stop eating by about 6.30 because you want your digestion to slow down by the time you're ready to go to sleep. If you eat too close to bedtime, it's actually gonna stimulate your brain and make it more difficult to go to sleep at night if you're trying to digest things at the same time. And as I said, by eight o'clock, I'm shutting down, trying to not consume too much stimulating content on my phone or on the TV and really getting to bed, putting my daughter to bed, doing our nighttime routine, trying my best to maintain the same bedtime window to take advantage of those melatonin and cortisol spikes that are really going to supercharge your day. Now this system didn't happen overnight. It's the result of 10 years of testing different neurotech products, supplements, and routines to train my brain for this long-term performance. If you wanna build your own optimized morning and mental fitness protocol, I do have a free PDF here that's a checklist of my routine. You can also check out the Primal Edge Challenge, which is the five-day challenge I was talking about. This is for people that really want to reclaim their focus, energy, and mental fitness with science-backed tools. Be sure to subscribe if you want to be part of this group of people that are really focused on improving our mental fitness with all kinds of different techniques and devices. And if you want to learn more about the Muse headband, for example, click this video here, and I'll see you on the other side. This, this challenge for me was, was really complete in terms of information. I think it really touched on the different fields connected with the uh, cognitive priming and performance and, uh, you know, both medical aspects and uh, mindfulness. Everything was touched. This session has been great and it's opened up some more questions for me. And uh, I thank you for that. And it's just in general, you know, Cody is not only getting stuff from you but also from the others so that's all i have to say for this but I, i'm really pleased i i was able to do it actually